Hello, welcome to Learn Swift for Beginners Lesson 9. In this video, you're going to be introduced to classes, which is an absolutely critical part of the Swift programming language if you're going to be using it to build apps. I'll tell you all about it. Let's get started. So I'm going to start off with a hypothetical example. So let's say you have something like a blog post which you would like to represent. Uh, we might have something like a variable here um, for blog title, right? Blog title can be Hello Playground. I don't know what kind of article that would be. Um, but we would have another variable for the blog body. And this is the you know text of the article or the blog post. And then we might have something like blog author, which in this case, let's just put my name here. So you can see here, this is the data for one blog post. Uh, now let's say I had two blog posts. What, what would I do in this case? Um, I might have another set of variables down here. And of course I can't have the same variable names. So let's just append two to these, um, these variable names. And let's say this is, I don't know, this article is goodbye playground. Okay. <laughs> Now this is what I have for two blog articles. Now what if I had 10? What if I had 100? How many variables would I have then? It, it'd be a ton, right? It'd be a mess. There needs to be a better way to represent a blog post, to kind of group these variables together. And there is. In fact, that's what a class is. You know how you learned about the different data types back in lesson two? You learned about the string data type, you learned about the int data type, float, double, boolean, all of those are data types to represent different types of data, right? Well, with classes, you can define your own custom data type. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create our custom data type um, called blog post, for example. You can do that with classes. Let's take a look at the syntax for declaring a new class. So first of all, you have the class keyword. Next, you have the name of the class, and this is going to be the name of your data type. Then you follow by two curly brackets, and inside those two curly brackets is your class definition. Let's take a look at this back in our playground. So, for example, up here, let's create and define our class. So first, I would use the class keyword. And then I would create a uh, name of the data type or the name of the class. In this case, let's put blog post. And notice that this time I'm starting off with a capital letter. In fact, all of the data types in Swift start off with a capital letter. So we should follow the same convention. Always start off your class names with a capital letter. And that's different from what we've been doing with variables and constants and functions. Okay, then I have these two curly brackets like that. What do I put inside of my blog post class? Well, why don't we put this stuff right here? I'm just going to cut it and I'm going to paste it inside here. And then I'm going to delete this right here. And I am going to delete this text inside these variables inside my class and leave them empty. And I'm going to explain why in a second. Okay, so just like that, we've defined a class called blog post. And this class has three properties. Now, a property is just a variable declaration like this, but inside a class, it's called a property. And you're gonna see why in a second, why it makes more sense. And because um, this, blog title, blog body, blog author is inside of blog post, it, it's kind of redundant to name them like this. So I'm just going to name them title, body, and author like that. Okay, so this, this represents our blog post right here. Now that you've defined what a blog post is, let's create an actual blog post. Because remember, this class definition right here, this is just a definition of a data type. You're defining what a blog post data type is, 
right? So that's not an actual blog post, just like how this is a string. That's not the definition of a string, that's an actual string. So in order to create an actual blog post, we're going to type in the class name followed by two rounded brackets like that. And just like that, this is a new instance of the blog post type. And it's called an object or blog post object. So when you define a new class using the class keyword, that's what's known as a class definition or just class. But when you create actual instances of that class, those are called objects. You can think of your class definition as a template or a blueprint, and you use that template to create actual tangible uh, blog post objects. So let's jump back to the playground here. This is a very important concept to understand. We've defined a class called blog post here. It's got these three properties, or you can think of them as attributes of a blog post. And then down here like this, we've created a new blog post object. Now this blog post object has a title, it has a body, and it has an author, but all of it, all of them are empty right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to assign this blog post object into a constant. Let's call it my post, like that. So what we've done here is we've created new blog post objects, we've assigned it to my post, and now why don't we try setting the title of this blog post and the body and the author? What we would do is say my post, right? That's referring to this new object. And then we press dot. And that lets us access those properties which we've defined in the class definition. Set the title to, um, I don't know, Hello Playground. I think that's what we had before. Let's set the author of this one. And let's set the uh, body to hello okay just hello now if i print my post dot author i would get my name now let me show you something else we can create a second instance of blog post or a second blog post object and let's call this my second post and we're going to set this to a new blog post object like that and we're going to say my second post dot title equals goodbye playground and we can set the author to someone else let's say um, John Travolta I don't know why that suddenly popped into my head and uh, let's just do hello again now this is a second my post object. This is different from my post. These are completely two different blog post objects. Both of them contain these three properties, which we can set because that's what we've defined here in this class. Now, another very cool thing about um, classes is that you can put functions in them. Right, you can see how all of the lessons so far are coming together. Let's create a new property for this first. Let's say a number of comments equals zero. This is the number of comments in the blog post. And we're gonna define a new function in this blog post class. We're gonna say add comment, okay? And we're not gonna worry about the comment text just yet. Let's just define this. Um, so notice that in my function definition, I have these two curly brackets again. Inside here, this is going to be my function code. So inside this function, I am just going to increase the number of comments by one. This is all stuff that you should have learned already in the previous lessons. Now, okay, so now every single blog post object is going to have this function. Now, how do we access it? We simply go my post dot you can see now in the autocomplete that there is this function called add comment and it doesn't have any return value it doesn't return anything so the return type is void right there let's call this function okay see what happens so add comment you can't visibly see what happens but let's print 
my post dot number of comments. You can see that it's one. Okay, now let's print my second post dot number of comments. What would you expect um, this to print out? It prints out zero. Why? Because we haven't called the add comment function on my second post. We just did that with the first post. Each of these blog post objects maintains its own properties. Changing the properties of one object does not affect the other. Even though they're cut from the same cloth, right? They're both types of blog post. They're two independent entities and they maintain their properties separately. Now there's a lot more to classes, but fundamentally I want you to understand uh, what they are. So I'm not going to make this video any longer than it needs to be. I just wanted to introduce classes to you. I hope you can see why classes are a fundamental building block to organize your information. In the next video, we're going to explore classes further. So thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if it helped you and please subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye for now.